फाइव सेकेंड्स टू गो स्टार्ट हैविंग नोटिस द फैक्चुअल बेसिस फॉर द प्रेफरमेंट ऑफ द पटिशन एंड द डिस्कलोजर्स मेड बाय द रिस्पोंडेंट्स वी नाउ प्रोसीड टू नोट द प्राइमरी लीगल सबमिशंस विच हैव बीन एडवांस्ड इन दीज प्रोसीडिंग्स लर्नड काउंसिल फॉर द पटिशनर वाइल रीअट्रेटिंग द एवरमेंट्स मेड इन द रिट पटिशन हैज कंटेंडेड दैट लार्ज स्केल स्कैम्स अकर्ड इन द अथॉरिटीज एंड मोर पर्टिकुलरली नोएडा clearly being indicative of the fact that all was not well he asserted that the state government even in the matter of posting of officers must act in a manner which inspires confidence in the public at large and that its action must not reflect of favoritism in favor of a select few it was contended that the continuance of the 12th respondent was clearly detrimental to the public interest without justification in law and that the state government was continuing to accord him protection despite various scams and allegations having been leveled against the 12th respondent and noida it was therefore submitted that larger public interest clearly warranted removal of the 12th respondent from the post of ceo noida the learned counsels for the respondents have apart from addressing submissions on the merits of the allegations leveled in the petition in unison taken serious objection to the entertainment of the pil itself and have submitted that the instant petition was neither bona fide nor did it espouse any issue of public interest in this respect we note that not only the learned advocate general but also shri ravi kant learned senior counsel and shri ravindra singh learned counsel who appeared for the 12th respondent have taken serious objection to this court having entertained the instant pil itself it was submitted that the instant proceedings are a clear abuse of the process of court and it is apparent that quite far from espousing any issue of public interest the same has come to be instituted at the behest and instance of unknown and interested quarters learned counsel drew the attention of the court to the fact that the petitioner was stated to be a society registered and resident at allahabad and that in the entire petition there was no material which may have even remotely indicated its activities or area of operations it was alleged that there was a complete non disclosure in the writ petition of particulars required under chapter 22 rule 3a of the allahabad high court rules 1952 learned counsel submitted that the writ petition carried not one averment of any public or social service which the petitioner society may be stated to have performed additionally it was contended that the writ petition itself did not bring on record either the memorandum or articles of the society so as to indicate its aims and objectives in fact learned counsel submitted that the petition had been instituted and entertained even in the absence of a resolution of the society deciding to institute the present proceedings and authorizing the petitioner in that regard the attention of the court was further drawn to the fact that none of the office bearers of the society had come forward to even affirm the affidavit in support of the petition and that the writ petition itself had been preferred on the strength of an affidavit of a 24 year old resident of district kosambi who was stated to be engaged in farming viewed in this light learned counsels submitted that the petition clearly lacked bona fides and should have been dismissed at the threshold itself it was contended 
that it is petitions like the present which have solid the field of public interest litigation and have consequently invited adverse comment from the supreme court as well as this court he submits that this court would clearly be transgressing the limits of its jurisdiction under article 226 to the constitution in interfering with such actions of the government it is his submission that issues of the nature which stand raised in this petition would clearly invite the court to step into an arena which is within the exclusive domain and discretion of the state government stop